things solo, just me on my own. I did a few uh, test streams of this stream, and now I'm back to do it properly. Roughly once a week, roughly weekend or early week. Sometimes it's difficult to get it quite right. Uh, today, I am going to do, let me just switch to a different view here. No, not that one, this one. Today, I am going to do Ex Novo by Martin Nuraka and Konstantantos. Demopolis. Uh, it's a city building game. I love building cities. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, it's very visual. So I actually have um, Procreate set up on my iPad. Oops, over here. <laughs> I also don't know uh, Procreate very well yet. So it's an excuse to, to uh, learn Procreate, but also <laughs> maybe I'm going to mess it up a lot. I'm already trying to remember how to erase something here. Um, good start. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to draw the map here. Um, the instructions for Ex Novo do talk about using tokens. Um, not quite sure how I'm going to handle that on the screen here. Uh, I do have real dice. I'm not going to use dice cam because I've already got one, two, three things that I'm recording. So, <laughs> so it's probably a bit too many already. I only have about 45 minutes in this stream, so we're probably going to make this into a multi-part one. So let's have a look at the PDF and then I will switch to the iPad. You and up to three friends, um, it's just me, <laughs> Take on the role of the guardian spirit of a freshly founded settlement. Its founding just brought you into existence. So I am spirit priest. And with it brought you your purpose to witness its growth, shepherd's development, and remember its stories. During play, you will make sense of the events happening as you draw and plan on a collaborative map of settlements, collaboration with just me, of course, and its changing shape. In the end, you will have created an interesting fictional place with a sense of history. So one to four players, so this does meet um, the solo uh, guidelines. One to three hours, so I'm probably going to aim to do about one and a half hours in two sessions. Three six-sided dice, voila. 25 tokens, uh, I'll just remember, 25 tokens, baby. Um, I'll write in the top of the... Um, create canvas we'll see that in a minute a large sheet of paper well I've got a large iPad screen um, trying again trying to show paper I think would have been too difficult note cards we'll also see how we go with that <laughs> and pens or pencils I felt like the iPad would be an easier way to do this but we'll see okay play overview I also have a no not that I also have a summary here summary sheet that I can use as well to remind ourselves of some things as we go. Probably most useful. Okay, so we begin with a brief discussion phase. Um, then we have a founding phase, a development phase, a topping out phase, and actions as we go. So, collaborative storytelling, obviously it's just myself here, so not so, um, collaborate with myself. I don't necessarily always agree with myself, especially from week to week. Um, and basically with a collaborative game, you're deciding if you're all on the same page, if you're all creating the same thing you want to create. So setting assumptions. So I'm thinking, so we sort of ex give some examples here to try and understand that people all want to create the same sort of world. I was wondering what I want to create. Um, Hmm. I think I'm going to create a kind of fantasy world. There's magic. Actually, I know. Kind of like the city from... Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> What's the name of the show? There is a show with Orlando Bloom on Amazon Prime. 
Condon Row? No, it's not right. Just give me one minute. Let's come back to full screen cam. Must I remember the name of this show? Because uh, I think that's the kind of world I want to create, actually. Uh, where it's sort of a um, carnival row. That's it, carnival row. I don't know if you've seen it. Let's switch back. No, not that one. This one. I don't know if you've seen Carnival Row, but it's a kind of a um, sort of Victorian England, but with fantasy creatures and, and magic and sort of steampunky armies and, and things like this. I think I'm going to go for something like that. Yeah. What do we want from the game? Um, I think we want to create an interesting place. I would ideally like to create something for a future adventure, but I don't think I will in this case. I think I'm just going for telling a story, creating a slightly dark and dangerous place like in Carnival Row, um, but with some positive underbellies. Okay, target size. Do not roll, but simply pick a table entry. Did you draw a number of lines on the paper to split the paper into regions? And players take turns drawing lines with just me. So pick an entry from the scale size table. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, Scale size table. Where is the scale size table? Ah, okay. Um, I think a small city seems reasonable. Split the map with nine lines. Now, is that um, in what way? Hundred percent sure what exactly is meant. I think there are examples. Uh, is that in there? I definitely see. Ah, here we go. So this is one, two, three, four. I suppose it's up to you then. Okay, well that's, that's fine with me. Okay, so where were we? Bum, bum, bum. Okay, nine lines. Right. Let's switch view. So we're gonna, I'm going to sort of vanish over here. I suppose I could actually um, kind of look at the camera and have my iPad here. I think I'm going to have to firstly uh, select a slightly better... Um, I basically want... Let me cut the pencil from here, shall we? Okay, so what should we go for? Oh, and it said... To, oops, where's that window gone? It said to set aside eight citizen tokens. Okay. All right. So nine lines. Uh, not sure how much zooming in and out I can do with Procreate. Looks like a reasonable amount. So hopefully drawing the lines at large scale is enough. Let's see. It's a very thin line. <laughs> fairly even here. I do like the fact that in the manual they don't make the illustrations look amazing to kind of make you not feel overwhelmed. Uh, I want to say there's like a small region down here maybe. A couple of Twitch giving me notifications <laughs> that I'm streaming. Okay, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight. Uh, I don't see why we can't. Let's do something crazy. So we have our nine lines. Okay, put that down. 
and set aside eight tokens. So this region up in the, the corner here is going to be, um, sorry, eight uh, tokens. Procreate is not very good for. <laughs> I wonder if there's a better way to do this. Uh, actually, yes, there probably is. I will. Tokens. So, twenty five, and we have eight for citizens. Yes. Okay, let's switch back. Okay, draw lines and divide the map. Set aside the tokens for the growth pool. We've done that. Okay, good. In this turn, you set the target age of the settlement. This will determine how old the settlement will be when the game ends. Pick an entry from the appropriate table. Additionally, target age determines how many development phases you will play. This will mean to determine how long the game will last. Pick an entry from the scale age table. Uh, okay. Hmm. Pick, or we could just roll, oh, we could roll as well. Um, we don't want to be too long. Let's go for grown. I was just spotted a typo there. I don't know if I can uh, contribute <laughs> anything to uh, point that out, but anyway. Um, grown, okay. Let's switch back to the iPad. Okay, so we are going for scale is grown and 10, mark 10 development phases on the map. What does that mean exactly? Uh, mark them for the time that you're on the map or a note card. Okay, that's good. So that is 10 development phases. Good. Okay. Good. views again. All right, what's next? Mark them development phase, we have done that. Okay, founding phase. In this phase, we collectively determine the starting conditions of your settlement. The starting player, which is just me, then begins and then play continues in turns. And then each turn we consult a different table, which leads us to the founding moment. Find out what kind of region the settlement was founded in. Roll on the table, draw it. Okay, and I guess we draw in um, wherever we want. That's something I'm not completely sure about. Just a clarification. Um, let's see. There is the... Uh, there we go. Settled area. Drawn on the map. And it goes through all things. Okay, fine, fine, good, good, good. Where were we? Where did that bomb go? Okay. All right. So we are currently rolling and then drawing. Let's roll. Terrain geography table. Okay, 2d6. I have a... Can you see that? Yes, good. A three and a four. Um, so I add the numbers. Oh, okay, so seven. We have a an inland. Oh, <laughs> well, this is going to be very uh, compelling viewing for you. Um, my instructions are we have, this is a 
It's our sort of Victorian industrial city full of smog and smoke with these magical creatures, but we are far, far away from anything. We're inland, far inland. I actually was kind of hoping for a port, but anyway. Plains and sky as far as the eye can see. How do they deal with the vastness? I don't know. I'm not sure how they deal with the vastness. I kind of feel compelled to draw like clouds somewhere. <laughs> I might put them uh, up in uh, here. Yeah, let's see. There are these, these <laughs> tokens that I haven't got rid of yet. Is that an eraser? I think I might brush those off. How do I erase things in there? Also been trying to learn procreate. <laughs> okay, let's do like clouds. This Apple Pencil is sort of more sensitive than you expect. <laughs> That's all they see all day. There's this 25T floating in the sky and uh, some <laughs> clouds and sunshine. Okay. All right. Anyway, what's next? Okay. Terrain features times four. This turn is repeated four times. Each time you discover a new terrain feature and add it to the map. And again, do we do it wherever we want? Uh, why did we draw it in divide into grids? Did I miss something here? Uh, no. Terrain features. There's another thing. There's no proper table of contents in this PDF. I will have, <laughs> I have to edit this PDF. <laughs> I suppose I could contact them. Um, Seems to imply, I think it's up to us, really. Okay, fine. That's good to me. All right. No worries. Terrain features times four. Roll on the terrain feature. Draw the terrain feature. Okay. So 2d6 again. I got a four and a three again. Seven. So we have a river, a small branching river or a large meandering run. Run one. What travels on this river? Uh, where should we put it? Let's see. Where should we put it? Hmm. I feel like a small meandering river up in this far corner beneath the clouds. So give me a minute and let's uh, draw this in. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'm just going to turn up the volume of the mic a bit because I'm moving around a lot. Ba -ba -ba -ba, that seems a bit better. Okay. So a small... Maybe this goes out of, uh, out of town to who knows where. What ends at the end here, down here? Not sure yet, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Okay, so we do this four times. Uh, this time I have six. An area of forest, maybe rainforest or grasses as tall as a man. What hides in these trees? Now, as we are in a plain, thinking grasses, very tall grasses actually. up over in this square here. It's looking a little empty. Large, tall. Large, tall grasses. I guess there comes a point where we should think of a name, but <laughs> it hasn't been asked for yet. And 
it's already alluded to there being things lurking in there. So we'll kind of put like a zoom in a bit here. Oops, getting right to the pixel. So that kind of shadows lurking. One more. No, no, two more, two more. <laughs> Thanks for liking uh, sixes and sevens today. More grass. Okay, uh, let's do uh, trees this time. Maybe. Uh, no. I'm going to say, oops, down here. Do apologise. I'm a little peckish, and my stomach is rumbling. <laughs> it is dinner time. Well, not quite. It's only six thirty my time. It's not quite dinner time, but I'm hungry. Okay. I think these are. Um, Abundant trees that reap, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe there's fruit in there. I feel like that's in colour here. <laughs> Just occurred to me. There you go. Expecting to change the color. There we go. Wants to be uh, something a little smaller. Uh, hmm. Oops. <laughs> uh, what's brush size? I cannot. Sort of random little fruits here and there. Uh, maybe add some green ones too. I suppose I could colour in all the trees, but it seems like a bit too much work. <laughs> and let's have a couple of random purple ones too. The multi fruit forest. There we go. All right. One last time. Let's hope we uh, don't get a six or a seven this time. <laughs> Keeping in pattern, we have an eight, which is a lake. Ah, well, here's an obvious destination for our river to go to. Okay. Let's. Uh, Oops, <laughs> getting a bit too relaxed in my chair here. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm back. Okay. Oops, no, not in purple. Now we can add a little bit of a artistic license here. But we did say it's kind of a Victorian industrial sort of time, so we should probably also make it, um, unfortunately, kind of grey and 
dirty, dirty colour as well. It's a bit too colourful right now. I reckon there's a, this forest over here is sort of um, one nice place. Everything else is just dirty and industrial. Go from like some kind of dirty browns as well. There we go. <laughs> it's just a bit much, big. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Let's switch back to see what we're going to do next. All right. Okay, founding locations. Now we have the surroundings, let's find out what about this place was special enough to found a settlement here. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere, so <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, access to a useful trade route. Terrain that is easy to fortify and defend. Roll on the purpose location table, draw it. Okay. Purpose location. All right, two to six again. Double one. The ruins, let's zoom in a bit on that. The ruins of a former settlement, an old fort, or maybe a temple. What do the people think this place once was? And what legends do they tell of the former inhabitants? Well, this actually fits quite nicely into our um, idea of this kind of fantasy carnival row dark place. It's an industrial city, but it has heritage of a, of, a, of a kind of magical fantasy city that no one really believes the myths, but they're there and they're still under the surface. And um, yeah, and it seeps through from into the, the top of the city, the modern city at times. So how do we illustrate that? Though? Let's have a think. Some kind of like relic that people don't really understand. Hmm. Maybe this forest being kind of like a, a nice natural place is sort of has something to do with that. It's near there and, and it has just a nicer influence on it. So I reckon some sort of um, old monument or something. Let's have a look. Okay. Let's go back to our pencil. Like a kind of ancient ruin and it, there's many of these things underneath the surface but this is one of the only visible ones so I don't really know what this is supposed to be <laughs> just like a kind of I'm not really sure what this is uh, <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, maybe more like a... Okay, yeah. Discarded... Ruins of... Some kind of... Large, ancient temple castle thing i don't really know what i'm drawing <laughs> i don't know how this describes that but it is kind of uh fey fairy magicish so it should have some sort of strange colors in it too colors and shapes Marbles. This brush is going to be very large. Okay. Um, 
and then some maybe some sort of goldy kind of color. Doesn't really look very gold, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so this is the ancient ruins of the magical kingdom, shall we say. Hmm. All right. What's next? Settlement decision. This turn tells us who initiated the founding of the settlement. The options range from an accident all the way to divine commandment. Roll on the purpose decision table. Draw on the first settlement district. How do we know what the first settlement district is exactly? Um, first settlement district. Areas where people live. I think it's just an abstract term. Uh, districts. Oh, okay. Are you ready for that? Okay. But yeah. All right. Okay. So, let's see. Move one citizen token. Place on settlement. Okay. So, let's have a look. Oops, I just realised I was in the wrong window. So we're about to do this, the settlement decision. Okay. Decision. Uh, 2d6 again. Okay, the numbers are starting to change a bit. 11. Okay, so what's it going to be? A ruler's whim. A city to please a single ruler. Why did they want this city? And did the people settle here willingly? Hmm. I think probably not. We're kind of going for this like dark industrial place that's just taken over this ancient fantasy magical city. So I think it was to... You know what? I'm going to go, it's like, it's not even to, to please a single ruler, it's to please like a kind of corporation, a kind of distant uh, corporation type kind of figure. Yeah. So it'll be like a, a, a sequence of kind of dark, like tower blocks in a kind of Victorian way. Uh, tenement block. I don't know, I'm not sure how that looks, but we'll, we'll, we'll go for it. Let, let's see how we can draw that. Okay. So, probably far away from from this area. Probably not particularly close to the scary area either. Uh, maybe up up over here. Then it can be divided by the river to keep the common plebs out. <laughs> so let's go for a dark kind of. Color, yeah, nice black color there. Uh, sketching. I'm only gonna switch to this kind of pencil. So it's kind of like, yeah, dark, shadowy block. Very functional kind of palace. <laughs> I think this is the right pencil choice as well. It's just like, and there's sort of one ruler and then a myriad of, um, of uh, diplomats serving them. Let's make some kind of windows here. I'm not sure if this really suits the uh, Victorian-esque Carnival Row image, but whatever. Sort of making it up as we go along. Yeah, so these dark kind of windows here. And of course to get in you have to fill with a lot of rubbish paperwork and things like that. 
let's say we have kind of these giant double doors down here. Um, kind of want a brown sort of a color. And move a citizen token. So we haven't really defined, decided how we're going to do the citizen token. Let's just say it's um, a blue circle. There we go. And um, we should probably remove one from our note. You know, have seven tokens. Okay, good. Let's zoom out a bit and have a look. It's kind of taking shape, I guess. Looks a bit sort of odd right now, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. I think I will get to the final step here, and then we'll probably have to call it a day, and then we can go into the actions next session. So starting hierarchy, the people have settled. Time to figure out how they organize their lives. This turn determines the power structures of the community. It also tells us how these people got here. Draw the path and or the vehicle that got them here. Roll on the power hierarchy table, draw the route. Okay, could be interesting here, especially what we've already said. Power hierarchy, just one D6. A Three. Improvisational hierarchy. Um, so maybe that the one ruler who founded it has kind of now moved on and the, the, the people never liked having this kind of uh, despot type ruler. So they've decided to not have any kind of hierarchy and just make it up as they go along. So experts or rulers are called together when needed. Who manages this process? How are the people selected? And we have to do a route. Draw the route that led them here. Hmm. It's kind of a, an odd ask. I'm not entirely sure how to illustrate that. Um, so I suppose we have this kind of place here that's where the, the, the despot came from. And maybe there's a ceremonial kind of path away from it into where they now meet. I'm not sure. I don't know. Sort of slightly strange kind of... Uh, the root. Draw the root that led here. Huh. I'm slightly confused by this statement. Draw the path or the vehicle. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well then let's say that there is There's a, there's a bridge uh, across the, the river here. That leads from the doorways. And actually, no, it makes more sense, I think, that they came from the river and then built this building from the river, maybe. So let's instead, yeah, create a more conventional kind of path. So they sort of landed here. And this kind of landing bay just before the, the, the river and then came slowly from the river to the doorway of this building.
Yeah. I found that a slightly confusing step. I didn't really know the best way to, to answer there, really. But, okay. All right. What's next? We have uh, two more steps, and then we will call it a day for this session. So, next are the community factions. In this step, we figure out how power is shared or split within the community. Um, so maybe our ideas here will work. Maybe we have kind of a despot and uh, more freedom-loving people. We figure out how power is shared or split with the community. This will produce a number of factions. The active player roles in terms of faction and adds the first landmark. Okay, so we just do it once. There's only one faction. Only one faction. I, I don't know. Uh, until all have been placed. Um, or maybe the table determines. Let's have a look. Ah, I see. Right. Okay. Yes. Two. Actually, this is perfect. <laughs> Seeds of dissent. Two factions. One in control. This is the uh, the the our despot here is in control and the other newly born the the ones that want to maybe continue over the river in a minute we'll, we'll come to that in a minute and they are the ones that go for this more freedom of hierarchy what questionable decisions led to this new faction the 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 despot just overstepped the mark too much values diverge so we had two factions so Landmark for the faction. I think we already have have the landmark. Actually, I sort of <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll just do the other faction. Um, which maybe they have like a a pathway on the other side of the river that leads to. is their kind of seat of governing which is just um, like a like a, like a kind of an outdoor field where they, they gather and make these more free decisions. Yeah. So we need a note card for and a citizen token for each faction. Well, oops. so we already have one over here. I'm not <laughs> really sure what uh, what blue I used. <laughs> uh, so we have another one over here. Oh well, that's actually much better. Let's <laughs> replace that one too. <laughs> And we have another one over here. There we go. And we should think of a name for these factions, I suppose. Um, so we now have three tokens out. So oops. Uh, we said with eight, so we now have um, five tokens left. And the factions. to give them a name um, the <laughs> like I can think of is a really cliched name so maybe the free loving faction is kind of the I don't know the free free wheeling faction that's, I don't know, that's a terrible name um, the free league I don't know it's a bit generic maybe I'll think of a better name and they have, uh, do we give them a citizen token from the city? To the faction in power. Okay. Ah, right. So there is no, okay. So, yeah. And um, let's go for this. POTUS and they have one citizen so 
So I guess that means we actually need to remove the one we put here. This is where it'd be super useful to figure out how to rub things out. Is that, I want to see. It's kind of how you do it. <laughs> Pretty sure there's a quicker way. <laughs> okay. So I think I understood correctly. Whoops. I think I understood correctly there. Um, I'll just switch back. Roll on the table, note the name and symbol of a faction. Draw a landmark for that faction. Move a citizen token from the city to the faction in power. Yes, we did do that. Okay, the final step is to name it. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure if this um, idea I was going for is really quite working, but let's go for something like that. Uh, so, something kind of dark, but with a mystical, un no, well, the mystical underbelly is suppressed, so it needs to be something dark. 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 It'll do. <laughs> the Duchy of Duran. The Duchy of Duran. There we go. All right. Well, and then we will get to the next phases next session. So, I hope you enjoyed this first session of um, I think a complete blank of what a blank, ex novo, ex novo. Uh, and uh, just to quickly flick back, there is the Duchy of Duran we have so far created. Uh, I was playing ex novo, um, just to quickly remind you of the book there. If you enjoyed what you've seen so far, we haven't got very far. And it's only me, I imagine how much slower this would be with uh, more than one person. but. Ex Novo by Martin Nurakar and Konstantinos, Kon Konstantinos Dimopoulos um, from Shark Bomb Games. You can get that, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, from uh, sharkbombs.itch.io. Um, I hope you enjoyed The Solo Adventurer. Roughly every week on YouTube, Christian Chiller or twitch.tv, The Solo Adventurer. And I will see you again next week where we continue the story of the Duchy of Durham.